By the grace of Christ, let us read from the second letter to John, the third letter to John, of John. <coughs> Sorry. The third letter of John. The elder to the beloved Gaius, whom I love in truth. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. For I rejoiced greatly when brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you just as you walk in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Beloved, you do faithfully whatever you do for the brethren and for strangers who have borne witness of your love before the church. If you send them forward in their journey in a manner worthy of God, you will do well. Because they went forth for his name's sake, taking nothing from the Gentiles. We, therefore, ought to receive such that we may become fellow workers for the truth. I wrote to the church, but Diotrephes, who loves to have the preeminence among them, does not receive us. Therefore, if I come, I will, I will call to mind the deeds which he does, prating against us with malicious words. And not content with that, he himself does not receive the brethren and forbids those who wish to, putting them out of the church. <laughs> Beloved, do not imitate what is evil, but what is good. He who does good is of God, but he who does evil has not seen God. Demetrius has a good testimony from all and from the truth itself. And we also bear witness, and you know that our testimony is true. I had many things to write, but I do not wish to write you with pen and ink. But I hope to see you shortly and we shall speak face to face. Peace to you. Our friends greet you. Greet the friends by name. Amen. This is the last letter of the Old Testament, of the New Testament, sorry. The next chapter of the Word of God is a revelation that in general has nothing, does not deal with the church. I would say it is the covenant of the new covenant where the word of God is spoken personally by John, the beloved disciple of the Lord and servant of God, toward Gaius, the beloved brother of John. This is a relationship of love. John is very beloved of Christ. Gaius is very beloved to John. And because love is the link to perfection, this is a letter that is unique. of special personal love, on a personal level. And it could not be the last letter of the Old Testament, of the New Testament, other than for it to be ruled by love, because God is love. But, then it was a letter of love by John to Gaius. Now it is a letter of love by Christ to everyone who is a Gaius. Now 
And today I believe that God reveals to us an example of a Christian, a type of Christian who is greatly beloved to Christ, even though he has nothing significant according to human logic, nothing significant to show other than what Christ, than what John sees in Gaius and Christ sees in everyone who is like Gaius. I do not see Gaius performing many miracles. I do not see Gaius prophesying with true great prophecies. Nor do we see him cast out demons in the name of Christ. I do not see Gaius being a great preacher. I do not see Gaius being possibly nor an elder or anything, certainly not a pastor. But what I see in Gaius is that he's a man who is very beloved to John and to the Lord. And today, God invites us to choose an example. Whom do we want to be like? Whom do we want to imitate? The Apostle Paul says, imitate me as I imitate Christ. Unbelievable example. Can I? There is an example which is wondrous, but unfortunately I cannot. There is an example to follow, and permit me my opinion to say this, that is even more wondrous than I can be like. Can I become like the Apostle Peter? I fear I cannot. Can I be like the Apostle Paul? I think not. Can I be like John? I can't. Can I become like Gaius? I can. I can. I can. And what will I win if I become like Gaius? First of all, I, be, I am greatly beloved of John and of the Lord. Secondly, I am a person that the Lord confirms and introduces, not as someone great and significant, but as a humble and blessed person. So God today is stirring us up. He's changing our patterns, our examples, our priorities. He's changing images for us. He's destroying before me all the things that I was believing in until now regarding the church, regarding servants and maidservants, about the great things that God will do. And he brings me now another example, which is none other than a small lamb, but he's in the hands of the Lord. Small lamb. Insignificant for Diotrephus. Who has a big idea about himself, and he presents himself as a leader of the church. And many through the church believe him to be a leader of the church. But the word of God, the wondrous word of God, says to me, take your eyes off the leaders, the good leaders, not diatrophies, the good ones, and turn your attention to this small, sweet, healthy, beautiful lamb which never slips away from the feet of Christ, the feet of the pastor, 
and choose what you want to be. Choose. Choose what you want to ask for me so I can make you like this. What do you want me to do for you today? Choose. And I chose. I want to be a small lamb and the feet of Christ that I, where I can enjoy the special love of God and to make him rejoice with great joy and that I become a co-worker not a protagonist but a co-worker and the truth of the gospel and I believe that it is the best choice that I've made in my life is the best thing that I have done in my life from the time that I've known Christ is to ask from my Lord to be a lamb of His that is healthy that is clean that is small insignificant but always next to the staff of my pastor my shepherd and on, always under His hand and His love and I want nothing else. I want nothing else. I want to enjoy the warmth of His hand. I want to enjoy His breath when He embraces me and kisses me. I don't want anything else. And I want Him to take me up to heaven. But, what does the Word of God say? You want these things? Listen what I want for you now. You want these things? Yes, yes, I do. That's what I want. It's the truth. That is what I want. Let me tell you now what I want for you. My beloved. He says to Gaius and not to me. My beloved. I wish, I pray, that you may prosper in all things and be in health, just as your soul prospers, just as your spiritual life prospers. Because when you are such a lamb like Gaius, the sure thing is that your soul will prosper and your spiritual life will prosper. What will prosper? You'll prosper in His love and His embrace under His care and His tenderness. No matter what you do, even if you do, if you do, um, if you break things, he, he, He'll embrace you because you look at the other lambs and you'll just embrace you next to him and caress you next to him. You'll see strong, blessed, and, and mighty lambs, but he will caress you. Beloved, I wish for you to prosper in all things and be in health in all things just as your soul prospers, your spiritual life, where in my presence, close to me, Why? Because I have great joy with you. Because they come and tell me, brethren, angels in heaven, and they bear witness that in your heart, the truth of the Word of God reigns and prevails. You hope and you trust and you want the Word of God to rule in your life, the Gospel of Christ. Not with human thoughts, 
but with assurance of truth. And not only that, my joy is great because not only does the truth reign in your heart, but you walk in the truth as well. And I have no greater joy for anyone other. No one else makes me so happy. No one else other than the one who is small, who is a babe, who is not noble, who is weak, but he wants, he seeks, he tries, he struggles, he prays to walk in the truth, and he doesn't take into account whether somebody mocks him, whether somebody despises him, whether somebody says various strange things. He rejoices in the warmth of the embrace of his Lord. Isn't it beautiful, my brethren, that you enjoy and rejoice in the embrace of the warmth of Christ because you never leave him, you never leave the Word of God, you never depart from his staff. But I have more joy, a second joy. Because you have a work of faith, a good work. Your faith in the Word of God is not dead because you have a work of faith. For anything you do to the brethren of this church, where you are, Gaius, and to the brethren who are from the other church, the neighbor, neighboring church. What do you do? Because you love them, you keep them in your house. Not those who approach you with partia partiality, or you see them with partiality, nor the great men who can invite you. But the brethren and the strangers, you keep them with love. You keep them in your heart. You keep them in your life and in your home. You entertain them. And not only that, but you also stand by them. And not only that, but you defend them when they accuse them. And not only that, but you bear witness to their truth. Not only that, but you participate in their humility. So whom are you keeping? Those who stay in your heart, those who remain in the truth, those who are accused because of the truth and you defend them. Those who are afflicted because of the truth and you support them. Those who are humble and they participate and they enjoy the grace of God just like you. Your heart is not open to everyone who says, Lord, Lord. But your heart is open to those who hear and keep my word. Just like my heart, Christ would say. Your heart is not open to those with which you agree. Your heart is open for those to those with which I agree. And who are the ones that I agree with? They are the ones who stand in the truth, who walk in the truth, who are close to me, and I am close to them. 
That is where your love is manifested, your special love. Your only love. There. And I am glad because you love with discernment. You have mercy with discernment. You entertain with discernment. No sin is allowed into your house. And in your house, Christ abides. And thirdly, you are a co-worker in the truth of them. You work with the truth that they preach. This is Gaius. He is the one who will hear at some point, not only you made many miracles, but when I was thirsty, you quenched my thirst. When I was hungry, you gave me food to eat. When you were sick to me, you came to me, and when I was a stranger, you kept me. And when you ask me, Lord, when did I do these things to you? He will hear. Gaius will hear this. Since you did not do this to one of the least of my brethren, you did it to me. This is Gaius. I want to be like him. Contrary. On the contrary, there is a leader. The special man. He's significant. He's Diotrephes. Who is, who wants to have the prominence. He loves the prominence. He loves for people to hear him and respect him. He does not care about loving Christ and respecting Christ. There's the other one as well. Let us not be like him. God forbid that I be this man. The leader, the teacher, the professor, the significant one, the theologian. Who prats, prattles, prats against the servants of God. This is his characteristic of the Trephes, the one who loves to have the prominence. He prats against the servants of God. He speaks evil. He, see this man, he sees this man working. And instead of saying, praise be to God for this man who is working, bless him more, he looks at his sin. And he becomes a participant in his sin instead of becoming a participant in the blessing. He prats. He prats against this man, against the other, for this man, for the other. And he prats not toward Christ, because it's good for me to prat toward Christ, to talk with Christ all the time. He talks to those who listen to him gleefully, because they are of the same spirit. And not only does he speak against us with wicked words, he does not find it sufficient to do this. But he doesn't receive the brethren. He makes choices and invitations of fellowship, impartiality, and so that he may hear these things that his heart enjoys to hear. And he says these things that his heart likes, enjoys to say. Keep us, Lord Jesus. Protect us. And not finding the words, the prating words enough, he also does not receive the brethren. And those who wish to, he forbids them. And he has the authority to put them out of the church as well, as if he is the Lord of the church. I repeat this, God, may God keep us, my dear brethren. You know why? 
because our heart is deceiving above all things and desperately wicked. Don't ever think, hmm, he's like this man over there. Oh, we say, could I be like this man, Diotrephes? Because when we think, hearing about Diotrephes, and we think of others, automatically, we judge others. And if they don't do anything, God permits us to do the same and worse, so we can understand that if you judge, you will be judged. And if you condemn, you will be condemned. And with all, whatever measure you measure, with the same will be counted back to you. So for that reason, the Apostle Paul and the Word of God assures us that we must say only what is true, only what is modest, what is righteous, true, modest, righteous, holy, acceptable if there is virtue some virtue or some praise consider these things you see a man what will you consider is there praise in him you will consider him is there in him virtue you will think of that virtue of course there will be mistakes and injustice and sins we all stumble in many things. You know anyone who is without sin? I don't. And I am not one of those who are without sin. But whatever is true, modest, righteous, pure, of good report, do not allow yourself to think anything else rather than these things. If you think of other things, then you have become Diotrephes, who wants to have the prominence. If you reject everything else, and you think of the things that are true, pure, and righteous, of good report, of virtue or praise, then you are a lamb of the Lord. And I want to be, I repeat it again, a lamb of the Lord. For that reason, I don't want to have wicked thoughts. I don't want to have second thoughts. I do not want to prat against my brethren. I do not want to separate them into good, bad, or ugly. I want one thing. I want to be with my Lord. I tell you the truth. I want one thing to be with Christ in His Holy Word. And now John comes and says, My beloved Gaius, be careful. Because your heart is deceiving and desperately wicked because you're a man. My beloved Gaius, that I love you in truth, because you walk in the truth, because you love with all your heart, you love your brethren as Christ has loved you, because you become a co uh, co-worker of the truth. Be careful. Do not imitate what is evil. But can such a man imitate what is evil? Of course. His heart is deceiving. Our heart is deceiving. Do not imitate what is evil but imitate what is good. For he who does good is from God. But he who does evil has not seen God. He does not know God. Is the Gaius in danger? Of course. But the beloved, the greatly beloved of the Lord, yes, he's in danger. Our soul is constantly in danger. No one is safe from the devil. The fiery darts of the enemy are shot. They cannot touch you, but they're shot toward you. With all diligence, keep your heart. For that reason, I repeat, whatever is true, modest, righteous, 
mature, of good report, consider these things. Do not allow your heart to consider other things. And if there is virtue and praise, then consider these things. And whatever you hear from me, from the gospel of Christ, do these things. And then the will and to do in your life will be done by Christ. May God keep us all. Do not imitate what is evil, my brother Gaius, greatly beloved brother Gaius, but imitate what is good, because the one who does good is of God. He who does not imitate God, but what is evil, is of the devil. He has not seen God. For that reason, make sure. Why? Because Demetrius, smaller than Gaius, is more insignificant than Gaius. There's a good testimony from all given. But to you, brother, is there a good testimony of you? And more correctly, to me, is a good testimony given of me? The truth is, the, what matters is from by who? Not by my friend, my buddy, my false teacher. As do I have a good testimony by all men, by all brethren, but more specifically, by the truth itself. Demetrius does not speak the truth now. Pay attention. The truth speaks about Demetrius. You know what it means for the truth to speak for Demetrius, for Christ to speak for your truth, for your life, for you to prosper and be of good, of sound mind, as your spiritual life prospers. It's not that Demetrius bears good witness of the truth. He's small, he's insignificant. The truth bears witness to Demetrius. And we bear witness of the truth. And you know that our testimony is true. There are two individuals that are so beloved of Christ, of John. And one person that is so far from Christ and from John. You, where are you? What does he see in you? What does Christ see in me? And here, the Word of God concludes His greatness. I have many things to say to you, but now I don't want to write to you. Now I want to meet you. I want to tell you these things face to face. This is who is greatly beloved. I want to come and talk with you. John says to Gaius, Christ says to every Gaius. I want to come, come and discuss with you mouth to mouth. Why? Because God's, God's pastime was Adam and Eve. Christ's pastime, if I can say, is Gaius and Demetrius. Are you the thing that Christ is interested? Make us so, Lord. Make us so, Lord Jesus. This is the last letter. This is the covenant of the covenant. But it is the beloved letter of God. Our favorite letter. Amen.